it's going to be a big one, Mom. You're probably right now the most excited audience that we've had in weeks. So welcome to the show. Emma Lagasse here. Isn't it great being in New York City, huh? Yeah. So, guess where we're going tonight? Yeah. We're going to the island, man. Yeah. We're going to the island of Jamaica, man. Yeah. Where the air is filled with guava and mango, coconut, ginger. Yeah. Tonight, Wait till you... I, I, we're going to learn so much tonight about some of this Jamaican cuisine. And first, we're going to do the na national dish of Jamaica, a traditional fruit and fish dish called aki and saltfish. Okay? Oh, no, no. Wait till you learn about this aki stuff. <laughs> oh, yeah, babe. A whole lot of aki coming up. <laughs> then I'm going to uh, cook a really... Uh, Great dish, one of my favorites, a Jamaican meat pie. Let me show you about the uh, this great dough that uh, we use for the meat pie. And then, of course, there's no Jamaican table complete without rice and peas, right? Yeah. I love that rice and pea stuff. Yeah. We may even slip in a little Jamaican rum. a little of that Jamaican rum, you know. Oh, oh, and did I tell you? Doc Gibbs in the Emerald Lab. Yeah! <laughs> Doc Gibbs in the Emerald Lab, man. Yeah! We're heading to Jamaica, man. Yeah! Right here on Emerald Lab. Welcome. See, these ain't the cheap seats after all, huh? <laughs> Amazing. Somebody, uh, somebody, uh, I gotta get me one of those. Who is that? God bless her. All right. Now, look at all these great ingredients here. I just got whacked by some cane stick over here. Look at all these great ingredients, but I'm gonna go right for it. This thing, you know what this is called? They call this ugly fruit. Oh, they got, some, they got some wild stuff down there in Jamaica. But right now, we're going to go right to the national dish. I'm so excited about telling you about this stuff because we're going to learn so much. Salt fish. It's hot there, obviously. So generally, when a cuisine is right smack in the middle of something as warm, hot, and beautiful like Jamaica, like New Orleans, the food tends to be a little spicier. The desserts tend to be a little sweeter. It's a little balancing act, you know? Keep you nice, fresh, you know. Let me tell you, they cure a lot of their meats, fishes, like jerk spice is an example. They do a lot of stuff with that, which we're not going to do tonight. We've done before. Oh, I'm sorry. Get your money back. <laughs> but this is codfish whole. This is cured, salted. Bacuya in Portugal. A lot of codfish. Jamaica, too, the national dish. And then something very interesting is that... Excuse me while I turn my pork fat around here. So the national dish is with salt cod and a key, which is this fruit. But this stuff is wild. I mean, listen to this. This is true story. You can't just, like, get a key anywhere. Matter of fact, in this country, you can only get it canned. 
And this is what it looks like. Can we get a shot of that buck? It has to almost blow up, like pop like that. It has to be ripe, very ripe, for it not to be poisonous. Hey, I'm not making this stuff up. Hey, if it wasn't the national dish, do you think I'd be, you know, doing this right here, you know? Oh, yeah, let me eat something that's poisonous. Let's have some maki and salt fish. Maybe we can get some blowfish in, too, you know? You know what I mean? We might as well just, hey, you know. I mean, if we're going to go for it, hey, let's go for it, you know? Get a couple of blowfish chefs in here, some marquee chefs. Hey, we'll have a big party. Give everybody a bottle of rum, knock ourselves out, right? <laughs> All right. I'm serious, Doc. They think I'm, I'm kidding. No, I'm serious. This marquee stuff and the membranes and the seeds in this thing is still poisonous, even though it gets ripe. So, wow. look, my recommendation is this. If you want to eat some maquis and saltfish, I'd go to a really, really, really good Jamaican restaurant, okay? <laughs> or if you're down there in Jamaica and you want to try it, you know, the real deal, because there you can get our key. <laughs> I'd go with someone who knows about it. <laughs> Just a little hint. Now, now that I got the bacon out of here, we're going to add all of these onions. <laughs> a lot of onions. And then we're going to add, they use a lot of allspice in their cooking as well. What I'm going to do right now is I'm going to add a tiny bit of cayenne. Yes. Just a tiny bit, because we're going somewhere. Because we got, look, habaneros. Allspice, they use a lot of allspice. A little bit of thyme. And we're going to add a julienne of sweet peppers first. And we're going to start cooking this down. Then I've got habanero. I've got some garlic and green onions. Now, the salt cod, let me tell you something, because my mom, we eat a lot of salt cod, Portuguese people as well. I soak this in cold water, not once, not twice, three times, and you gotta change the water. Then I brought it up now, and four times now. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so now I brought it up. And I'm letting it cool. Now I want to make sure that before I start flaking this, okay, we want to check to make sure there's no bones. Because how do we know? It was covered with salt when we bought it, right? So I'm going to flake this, cook these onions. I got the Aki standing by over there. When we come back, Mon, we're going to kick it up another notch. <laughs> If you're just joining us, man, we're doing a little Jamaican cuisine tonight, the national dish right now, salt fish and aki. I want to also say, folks, that the aki that you can buy here in this country, which will come canned, is not poisonous. That's what they told me. So I'm going to try it. This is what it looks like right here. After this onions and the sweet peppers, a little allspice gets happy, happy. Now what we're going to do is we're going to add a little bit of about 60 cloves of chopped garlic in there. <laughs> and we're going to add about half of this habanero. Well, let me tell you why. 
Yeah, let me tell you why. This little guy right here, you know, they're related to Scotch bonnet, which is also used a lot in their cuisine. This is 50 times hotter than a jalapeno. So, talk about blowing your brains out. We'll only start with half. Now, once that cooks a little bit, we're gonna add the green onions, the salt fish that I've been shredding, the aki, and tomato. Oh yeah, babe. Now, I'm gonna start working this in. Just keep working it and working it. And after it cooks for a bit, folks, this is actually here after about 20, 30 minutes, what it looks like right here. You see that? That's the national dish. And how it's generally served, how it's generally served is with rice. So we'll get a little bit of rice here. Or a lot of rice. The salt fish and aki. And then traditionally how it is served would be with some bacon. That's just kind of... We'll kick it up a little notch, bam, just a little bit like that. There you have it, the national dish. Jamaican meat pies. Here's where we're gonna start. You know, this is sort of like an inspiration to have a multiple uh, cultures and ingredients there in Jamaica, you know? It's not only just uh, a little bit of French and Spanish, but English, Asian. And I guess this is really uh, comes from the influences of English, these meat pies. But of course, they're kicked up. We're going to start with ground beef. Sometimes it's a combination of ground beef and pork. And then Jamaica is also considered the ginger garden. A lot of ginger grows there, a lot of ginger in the food. We're going to add some ginger to this. We're making the filling right now. Oh, go ahead. The paramedics are close by. I'm just kidding. Don't worry, I'm tight with the cops and the firemen, so don't worry about nothing. really a good dish. I love that salt fish stuff. Grew up on that stuff. All right, now, once the meat starts browning, folks, we're going to add onions. They add a lot of garlic. <laughs> Grated ginger. So now what we're going to do is we're going to just sort of cook that a little bit even though the meat is not completely brown. Now, let me show you the interesting spices. So like a little spice wheel here. A little turmeric. Cumin. There's that allspice again. They use a lot of allspice. Habanero. little thyme. So there's the spice. There's the allspice. Not ground. Now what we're going to do is we're going to add just a little bit. Once that cooks a little, just a little bit of moisture. We're going to add a little bit of stock. Water, if you don't have stock, is fine. Just make sure you season it. I don't know where you get your water. I get mine. It don't come seasoned. All right, now, flavors are starting to happen. That's 
what we're going to do now is we're going to add some stock, a little quarter cup of beef broth a little bit there. And we're going to add some tomato. Because the tomato, the chopped tomato, the juices are going to come out of that. And then we're going to add some salt. <laughs> All right, so we're going to let that simmer. Inside the food processor, now I'm going to make the dough. I've got flour, salt, more turmeric. Sometimes they'll use anchiote, it's another spice down there, or natto seeds. They'll use some of that sometimes too. Then, I love this crust. I'm gonna add some lard. Yeah. Hey, I'm with them. Believe me, lard's the best for crust. It's a pork fat thing. But I'm gonna add a little butter too. Just a little bit. Still trying to help the dairy farmers out here in America, you know? <laughs> All right, now, it's a great easy way to make crust. Just like you're gonna do it by hand, okay? We're just kind of getting that, the fat with the, uh, with the flour. Then, once you know that that's happened, oh, look at this, a piece of lard trying to escape. <laughs> Once you know that that's going to happen, see like I got right here now, we'll knock that down here. Watch. Off the sides of the bowl. Then you're ready to add, see in the tumor it gives it that nice little color like that. <laughs> Ladies, be careful with him. <laughs> Trust me. And then we'll add the water when you're ready to start making the dough. And when it comes together, that's when you want to shut it off. It's good to refrigerate it too. All right, our filling's working. I'm going to start sort of kneading the dough a little bit. You don't want to overwork it because you'll get, it'll get tough, okay? When we come back, oh, I can feel the sand between my toes. <laughs> Stick around. We'll be right back. Come back in. Welcome back to the Island of Love show right here, you know? Doing a little Jamaican cuisine. Got the dough made. Keep it in the ice box until you're ready to work with it. But before then, let me show you. See, all the liquid is almost done with our meat filling. And as I told you earlier, in Jamaica, they're called Scotch bonnets. Go to Mexico, they call habanero. Cousins, hot, <laughs> love it too. Now, once the, uh, that's evaporated, what we're gonna do now is we're gonna add some rum. <laughs> that's what they say down there in the island, to kick it up a notch, man. <laughs> Little parsley, some green onions. Careful if you're working with an open flame, folks, that 
doesn't flame up. Now what we're going to do is reduce that again. And then we'll pour it out and cool it in a bowl like I've done right here. It's a little taste. What you think? Not bad, huh? Oh, that's all right. Not There's bad. plenty more where that's coming from. <laughs> when it cools, now we're going to make like a little meat pie. So look, we're going to add the filling. See the, how that turmeric just caught a color of the dough like that? Then, folks, you fold it over like such. Then make sure that the ends touch each other, and then we crimp it. I'm using just a little fork like this, you see? We crimp the ends like that. Now, the great thing is you can make these ahead of time. Then when you're ready, your guests come over. Family, make sure you check. See how that seam didn't stick? Because it'll ooze all out. We don't want that to happen. We don't want no oozing. You can always just go back and... Some friends of yours over there, Yeah, Doc? I think so. We don't want anything oozing. No, no. We don't want nothing oozing, and we don't want nothing ooching across the floor. Right. Because let me tell you, if you get the ooze, and it ooches across the floor, you're in trouble. <laughs> now, I'm going to show you a little Jamaican egg wash. They put rum in the eggs. Talk about happy. Some happy chickens now. And then what you want to do is you want to egg wash them before you put them inside the oven. 350 degrees. All right. 350 degrees. And guess what? That's what they look like after about 25 minutes. Oh, I'm baking another batch for the second shift. So we'll let these cool just a little bit. Ah, why not? You can make them smaller, too. And then you can use them as little hors d'oeuvres if you don't want to have them that big. Now, let's talk about another staple. Even though they call it rice and peas, they actually use beans. They soak beans for a day or two, like I have here, kidney beans. A ham hock. Oh, I sleep with these. Oh, I love these. Sometimes, if you ever get in, a, in the right spot with me in an elevator, and, and you're wondering why the right side's kind of bulging a little bit, you know why. Oh, yeah. See, I don't carry a purse. If I carried a purse, I'd have it in a purse. That's why I'm bulging a little to the right over there. It's a ham hock. So we're going to add that in there. A few cloves of garlic, right? <laughs> then you let it get happy for a little bit, OK? You let it simmer like that. It's going to simmer for about an hour. Let me show you something real quick. You take a coconut. Oh, yeah, this one's got milk. See, it's got like a face like there, see? We paint them for Mardi Gras. <laughs> we take the busted in half, get the milk, and then you scoop that right out of there. Or you break it away, like I've done here. Get around that outside bit right there. You see that? Then what you do, 
is you take your pieces of coconut and some water. Put it inside the blender. Now we got some coconut milk. Unsweetened. Put a shot of that in your coffee. Happy, happy. The reason why, after the water evaporates, like an hour, okay? Because it takes more for the ham hock to cook. This is kind of what it looks like right here. You see that? Good. Because now what you're going to see is this. You're supposed to strain through the cheesecloth in case any, you see how it looks kind of like, it doesn't bother me. So if you want to strain it, strain it. You don't want to strain it, hey, you're not going to hurt my feelings. <laughs> but if you strain it, it'll eventually look like this. Didn't it look the same to you? Yeah, that's what I say. We're going to add a couple of cups of that coconut. Look, and I like the chunks like that. That don't bother me. No, it don't. We're going to add some green onions. There's that allspice again. Oh. Oh. We'll cover it up, we'll let it get happy before we add the rice. When we come in, and when we come back, I promise you, another notch! Make some friends. Be happy. Welcome back, everybody. Emma Lugazzi here. If you're just joining us... If you're just joining us, this ain't that other Temptation Island show. This is a real food show. And we don't eat bugs. After about an hour goes by, you should smell that scotch bonnet pepper in there then what you want to do now folks you can pour water to rinse if you ever want to rinse your rice fast you know you got dirty rice well in new orleans that would be good to have dirty rice you can just rinse it like that you see well we're going to add the rice now add a little more coconut milk Oh, I will add it all. Why not? <laughs> 15, 20 minutes. How's the meat pies? Pretty good, huh? With all the different spices in there. I'm with you, sister. <laughs> so, look at this. There you have the, the rice... I call it rice and beans. They call it rice and peas. Whatever, though, you want to try to get some of that ham hock. Look at that. Talk about making you happy. And they just serve big bowls of this. And, uh, and there you have it. Okay? Give it a taste. I'm going to start this... Uh, rum cake that they make with orange. So I'm going to start with cream and butter and the zest of a whole orange or a tangerine. Actually, we're using a tangerine. I'm in a tangerine kind of mode. 
See that? That's a tangerine. So we're going to take the butter and the orange zest, and we're going to start creaming that, getting it soft. While we're getting it soft, we're going to take the dry ingredients. I got a little paper here, parchment paper. We're going to take some flour, baking powder. That'll make it poofy. <laughs> and we're just going to kind of sift this. Now, there's a couple of reasons why I'm doing this. I'm sieving it right here. Look, see what's in there? That's it. That's one reason why you want to do that. The other reason is that I'm also aerating. I'm aerating the flour. Get all the lumps out now. Then once that butter is soft, then what we'll do is we'll add the sugar. See what it's doing now? It's creaming. And then we'll add one egg at a time. Oops. Now, you want to scrape this down, the sides. Then I'm going to add the flour and baking powder and a couple of ounces of rum. And then I'm going to put it inside these cake pans that I've just lightly buttered and sugared, inverted. 350 degrees. When we come back, I'll show you what they look like. Yeah. Stick around. Doc Gibbs, the Everlast Band. Your uh, a little tangerine rum cake in the style of Jamaica, man. So what we're gonna do now? You divide the dough in the two pans, and as I said before, we went out 350 degrees. It's gonna take about 25 minutes for those to cook. So we have two cakes. We added about. Well, we added a little more than two ounces of rum. <laughs> I can smell the rum now. So, in the oven they go. And then, we're gonna take some guava, which is another great ingredient used in a lot of Jamaican cooking. We're going to take some guava jam and some orange or tangerine juice. Just the juice from the tangerine. Everything all right up there, ladies? Having a good time so far? Then what I've got here is I've got some whipped cream, I've got some rum, and I've got some orange or tangerine segments because what I want to show you now when these cakes come out of the oven it's like almost like a sponge type cake light well I'll show you this is something that I have almost like a very light genoise but there's a certain density to it not enough rum in this <laughs> There I am, driving Miss Daisy. <laughs> but I'm going to show you what we're going to do to this. If you ever get a cake, then that happens to it. But we did this purposely. We want it like this. Because I'm going to show you what we're going to do. We'll take a little plate. And what I do is I 
put one down on the bottom. It's cooled now. And what we do is we go around and just kind of with a toothpick, we just kind of make some holes like this, almost to the bottom. <laughs> That's some cake hole music by Doc Gibbs. <laughs> now, what we do is we take a little rum. Oops. Oops. I hate when that happens. So we let it go in there. See, what happens is that the cake right now, you can't see this at home, which is why you should be here with us in New York City. Then what we're going to do is we're going to take the tangerine and the guava and we're going to add some of that on there. See, and what's going on? You can't see this at home, but the cake's just going. <laughs> yeah, it's exactly. It's a... I mean, that's what I'd be doing if you were painting me with guava right now, you know some rum. <laughs> now, we let that settle in there a little bit. And then what we're going to do, folks, is that once it settles in, we're going to put a little layer of whipped cream. Yep. And then we're going to put some orange or tangerine segments. I'll show you how to serve it Jamaican style when we come back. Stick around. <laughs> Cuisine. Let me recap this little rum tangerine cake. You want to just sort of toothpick, almost go down to the bottom. And then what you want to do is you want to drizzle a little rum on there. And some of that guava and tangerine. See, you want to get it good and soaked like that. Then, what we're going to do is take a little bit of whipped cream, sweetened, make it real simple, just kind of and then we'll take some of those orange segments And we'll just kind of add some of those orange segments to it. Now that's for a single layer. Now if you wanted to do it differently, I'm sorry, ladies. We have to put up with them too. Now, to serve this up, now, if you could make it double layer, you could put this on there, vice versa, and make it a double layer. But here's how I would serve it. You just want to kind of get a little layer like this, a little wedge. See, and I'm going to show you how the rum, see how it kind of soaked in there?
It'll take a little bit more of that guava. Just kind of drizzle it like that. A little bit of fresh mint. Just a little bam, 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 bam. Little cinnamon like that. There you have it right there. A little Jamaican rum cake. See that? Hey, I'm Emma Lagasse. I want to thank you for joining me tonight. See you tomorrow.